Okay, welcome back. So, last time we created our materials folder, if I right click on here, uh, I can go and select material and just uh, say M underscore pickup uh, 01. Um, and Control Shift S just to save that. I just like to save them beforehand in case something goes wrong. Never does, but in case something goes wrong. And we're just going to be doing some really basic material stuff in here, I think, for now. Um, so uh, they've changed the. Oh, here we go, the palette. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to grab a constant three vector, drag it into here. If you remember, I think I might have mentioned this, <clears throat> or maybe haven't. Um, a constant three vector is simply three floats. Now, um, three floats we can use to, to describe uh, a color, RGB, red, green, or blue. We can also use it to describe a position in space, um, uh, X, Y, Z. So this is often used um, one way or other. So you can use these sort of variables as points or what we call vectors, um, or as colors as well. They're kind of interchangeable uh, in that respect. So uh, we've got here base color and let's just select a color, um, something funky, and maybe, maybe that. And I'm gonna go okay. And that didn't work because <laughs> it always does this. So let's go back there, drag that up. Whoops, uh, now it's gonna be some bright pink. Um, what I will mention, well, let's, I'll, I'll do this first. There we go, and drag it into base color. Now I can also do our metallic and our roughness. Um, metallic tends to be either one or zero. So what we can do here is we can just grab a constant. Um, we had a constant three vector before. All we need here is a single um, value, single float, uh, metallic. Drag that into there, and that is completely not metallic because it's zero. And let's go and duplicate that. And we're also going to drag that into roughness. And you'll see all of a sudden that's nice and shiny. That's because there's no roughness to it. You can see it's reflecting there. Uh, if I go and now change this to one, we now also have a lovely metal metallic color. Um, so, uh, what are we going to do? I, um, have a feeling that's, well, I guess it's going to show up, um, although I don't really want it to be incredibly shiny. So I might give, maybe give it a, a 0.4, which gives it still a metallic, and we might actually make that non-metallic like so. So it's kind of like a shiny plastic, pretty exciting kind of thing. Uh, let's just save that. And I am going to now, I'm going to apply it in here because I want this to be the material that we use uh, by default. So I could go and do it in the level, but that would only change it for this particular instance. So if I want to do it for all instances, I need to go in to the blueprint and then say, use the material I have selected, which is this one that I have selected here. Uh, and then then goes and updates it. Fantastic, absolutely beautiful. What a work of art. Um, programmer art, it is called. So now we go into here and we have a similar thing. Uh, I will show you one little trick that we can use in our materials. So if we go and have a look here, you can see our color. We have this wonderful pink color. Um, what if you want to make it more obvious? So we've got, this is our color picker. We have R, G, and B. So we've got red uh, is one, um, green is zero, and blue is 0.729876, exactly. Uh, so the colors, red, green, and blue, tend to be zero to one giving us our range. But we also have another thing here as well. 
hue, saturation, and value. So if you've worked in other uh, applications like um, uh, Photoshop or anything like that, you will probably be familiar with this type of color where you've got hue, saturation, and value. So value is the brightness of the, uh, the material. So you can see hue gives us our color and it's that sort of selection here. So we can change that color. We can go back to here with blue or something uh, or light blue, whatever we like. And that just changes the value of the hue. Um, what we can do, what I wanted to show you is that we can actually go higher than one for, for, for the value. Uh, and what happens if we go 100? Did it work? Actually, did that change it? It did not change it. Ah, why are you not change it? 100. Uh, is that not going to work in this one? Why is that not going to work here? Why is that not going to work? That's... So, okay. It's making a liar out of me. Hmm. Why is that the case? It's not letting me do that. That's weird. What about 10? It's going to do the same thing again, isn't it? It's got 10. Uh, let's try this. 10. 10. Okay. It's still not going to do it either, is it? It's not doing it. What is going on? Oh, hang on. It has done it. Okay. So let's just save that. And if we go to here now, uh, we can't really see it. So the reason I'm showing you this is because, here we go, let's do it from in here. 100, 100, save. I have a feeling this is not doing what it's supposed to do. It is not either. Hmm, okay. They might have changed something in this uh, in this um, version. I'm trying to think why. Normally you can go brighter than that. What have they done? Uh, in my material. That is very interesting. Okay, I'm going to have to come back to that and see what is going on. Save here. Is there something to do with this? Uh, surface opaque default lit. Oh, you know what? Emissive color. That's ah, there we go. There we go. That's what I was looking for. All right, <laughs> my bad. All right, so if we want to make materials, well, objects look like light, so that's pretty strong. Uh, we can actually overblow the um, the values in here. So let's take it to 10. 10 is probably going to be enough, I think. There we go. All right, that's that's still pretty bright. Bright. In fact, I might take that down even a little bit further. So uh, let's try five. Mm, that might be a little bit better. Okay, so just say we wanted these sort of glowing rocks or whatever, we could have something like that. And we can take that to a, a you know, in a different extreme, which I might, if we've got time, show you a little bit later. Uh, okay, so we've, we have our pickup, which is nice. We've got the compile, make that saved. So that's what we're going to be uh, dropping into the level. And, um, okay, so what we're going to do in the next, uh, the next section is create a spawner so we can actually spawn these objects dynamically in the level. Uh, so we'll be back in just a second.